So help me welcome Mike Beatty. Thanks, Laura. How you doing? Y'all ready, aren't you? This, this, this is awesome. And, uh, you know, I got to get one thing out of the way, okay? Jimmy Hooper, stand up. Where's Jimmy at? Now, Jimmy was my principal when I coached at Banks County. Now, Jimmy, we did win the sub-region championship, right? So if you need... That, that's right. So I, I, you got to know that. And where's Jimmy Hicks? Stand up, Jimmy. Now, Jimmy hired me in 1974 to teach social studies, and he put me in an open classroom concept in a middle school for 6500 bucks and a $500 coaching supplement for three sports. In 1975, I coached his son. We won the North Georgia Championship, which Jefferson's in that same mode, I think, since his son played on both those teams. And I went to Jimmy for a raise. They just hired a band director, and we're paying him twice as much as they were paying me. <laughs> so I go to Jimmy, and I'm just kind of, if I could just get paid what I'm worth, you know, we, you know and Jimmy said, we'd pay you what you're worth but there's a minimum wage law in effect. <laughs> and by the way, good band directors are hard to find. <laughs> Coaches like you are a dime a dozen. I'm so glad you're my commissioner at this point. And I could talk about Tom Crow, but I won't. And, uh, Jefferson, I was thinking about the, the event that I witnessed yesterday and, and saw the kind of information and, and really the commitment to excellence that Ross King has for this organization. And Ross and I have been around, I guess, 10 years, you know, or, and I'm just amazed at, at what you're getting. And that partnership with Jennifer Frum and, 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 and with Laura Meadows, don't you love these folks? Aren't they? I mean, Laura Meadows, I'm, I'm telling you. You will have no excuse when you leave here because you're going to be part of that team. We're going to work together to help move Georgia to that next level of greatness. Are y'all with me on that? Can we do that? And we're, let, me, let, let me tell you something. It really is Team Georgia. I know it seems hokey. I don't care. <laughs> together, everyone achieves more. And if we work together, Work with the legislature. I was with the governor yesterday, and he told me to bring greetings to you. And we looked at a lot of different things that I'm going to work with Todd on, actually. It's okay if I work with Todd. Todd, Todd was on the radio yet. How many of y'all know Todd? So, Todd over there is on the radio. How many of y'all believe he's got a face for radio? I mean, I... I <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but we dang going to do it. You with me? I, I don't care. Let, let, let me tell you something. I figured out there's a lot of things going on that I can't control. If you honestly, if you want to be, this is what I'm supposed to do. You may bring this panel up anyway. <laughs> if you want to be a pessimist, focus in on the things you can't control. Right, George? There's George over there. Congratulations. I owe you too. <laughs> Concentrate on the things you can't control. There's a lot of things when I go to Washington, D.C., I get frustrated with. How about y'all? If you want to be an optimist, get out in this state and work with local leaders who are figuring it out, right? And we are going to figure it out. And I will tell you, go out and make some mistakes. Take what you get here and follow through. Go to the academy. I have to, I'm going to give a selfless plug for the Georgia Academy. If you haven't gone to our academy, you need to do that. It'll give you some. How many of y'all been are graduates of our Georgia Academy? Y'all agree with that? Clap if you agree with that. Well, that was weak. Clap if you agree with that. <laughs> but I'm going I'm to just leave you with this thought, and in conclusion, I'm going to bring this great panel up. They are so awesome, and I'm, I'm going to change all the questions. I'm going to pull one of y'all out of the audience to come up here. And you don't know who it is, so some of y'all looking really worried, aren't you, Tom Crow? And uh, I'm not going to do that. But, you know, don't get, you know, at DCA, there's a lot of things we do. And I, I, the thing I've been talking about, 
Let's be sure at the Department of Community Affairs that we bring value to the customers that we serve. And guess who our customers are? You. And if we aren't bringing value, Ross is going to tell me, because we have that relationship that we can sit down and disagree and talk. We've done it with planning. We've done it with this immigration stuff. We're working on a lot of different things, but we're not going to throw stones at each other. We're going to get together. We're going to figure it out. If there's things we're doing that aren't bringing value to you, you know what we're going to do? We're going to change it. And if it's planning, if it's downtown development, whatever that might be, Laura, if we're not bringing value, we're going to change it. But I, I want to challenge you. You be sure you bring value. You keep that walking around sense that got you here. Right? How many of y'all got some good walking around sense? You all do. I see Charlotte over there. We got it, don't we, Charlotte? We, we partners, all right, Charlotte? You know, you got to have it. Don't, don't, don't get so insulated that you aren't. I, I call it, how many of y'all have ever taken the Waffle House poll? How many of y'all eat at a Waffle House? What do the rest of y'all eat at? <laughs> I don't mind. Well, I mean, how many of y'all eat at McDonald's? I do the Waffle House poll all the time. Now, if you want to travel with me, and you can travel with me. I travel all over this state. Last week, I put 1,300 miles on this state car, going uh, to Tifton, to Cayman. Where'd we go? We were all, all over the place. And I, I, I tell you, I've gotten re-energized after 10 years. I turned 60, and I don't care anymore. I don't know what it is. I just... <laughs> But when I, walk, when I come in your community, I go to the Waffle House, I go to the Huddle House, I ask them about you. I say, I'm Mike Beatty, I'm from the government. How we doing? Now, you go to that McDonald's in Jefferson, Jimmy. Jimmy, you graduated from that Who's Through group in, in, in Georgia, right, to the McDonald's? You're not there anymore, are you? Who's Through in Georgia? Anyway, they're going to tell you how we doing. And let's send the perception that we're going to figure it out. We're the, you know, at DCA, I said, we're the uncola of state agencies. A lot of y'all have my cell number. I don't know some of you too well yet. I'm gonna, I don't know I don't to give you my cell number. I don't know. There's just some of y'all. Liz, you know, by the way, Liz, was, Liz House was speeding through Jackson County today. <laughs> and I, I, blo I blame her in arcade. Where's Dennis at? Dennis, she was in arcade. Where's Dennis? Then I stopped him and, and let her go. Okay, is that all right? Anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. We, just, we want to, the uncola of state agencies. I want you to feel so comfortable. You know, I've, I've got uh, Sarah Lynn Stafford. I have to tell you, Sarah Lynn Stafford, my wife says, don't ever let Sarah Lynn get too far from the center of what's happening. <laughs> Sarah Lynn Stafford has got that walking around sense, and we have a staff that uh, our challenge, right, Sarah Lynn, is to figure it out. And I'm so, y'all give Sarah Lynn Stafford a hand. I, I, I just, um, you know, and, and I kind of end with this, you know, but being a commissioner is a lot like being a coach. You know that? Sometimes you just got to learn how to take advice. Now, Jimmy knows in 1975, we lost to Madison County our first game, then with Jimmy. Where's my Madison County folks? We never lose to Madison County at Jefferson. <laughs> then we lost to Oglethorpe. Where's the Oglethorpe camp? We got any Oglethorpe? My God, they beat us the second game. We tied the third. 1975, we're 0-2-1. Now, at Jefferson, we've always had pretty good football front. You hired me, too. They were after your tail, too. I know that. <laughs> so I'm in the grocery store getting groceries, and this guy comes with my wife. This guy comes up and says, Coach, he says, I love you to death, man. You got to quit running in place. It ain't working. <laughs> and I got my wife there. Been married 41 years. And I'm thinking, well, she's going to help me a little bit here. Now, she's going to take up for her fella. She looked at old Bob and said, Bob, I've been telling him that. Them dang plays ain't working. <laughs> we changed them, didn't we? We changed them. We won 10 games in a row. Anybody here from Irwin County? Now, we played Irwin County in the state championship. Who do you think won that game? Oh. <laughs> but we got there, didn't we? Didn't we? 
Yeah, I think we lost to Lincoln County. But, but the point is, sometimes you just have to change. Don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid of doing something different. Take that advice. You know, I'm going to bring this panel up right now because I will tell you something. You know, uh, these are folks, we did a little practice, and they think I'm, they know exactly what I'm going to do with them, but they don't. And, uh, but I want you to listen to it. Listen to the wisdom of folks who have been right where you are and that over the last two years have learned some things, okay, and listen to them because they'll help you. I'm going to bring them up one at a time because I want to get, I, I, how they do it on the shows and stuff, you bring people up one at a time, you give them, you clap. Let, let's bring up Bob Melvin from Macon. <laughs> Carter Enfinger from Bryan. Come on up, Carter. Y'all give Carter a hand. Liz Hausman from Fulton. Come on, let's give Liz a hand. Mary Hunt from Glenn. Come on now, let's do it. Now, what I'm going to do, and, and I don't know, can we take questions from the floor at some point, Jennifer? Would that be legal? Okay, all right. We might do that. What do y'all want to do? Y'all want to do it kind of like that? And just... All right, okay, all right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the question out. And I don't care who starts, okay, but I'd like for each one of you to at least touch on it, okay? So, I, you know, tell these folks why you ran for office and what some of your original goals were when you ran. Well, I ran for office because, frankly, I, my, uh, the gentleman that was in before, I, I figured I could do way better than him. <laughs> <laughs> um, it wasn't my, his, uh, I was, a lot better just by answering my phone. So uh, for me, the reason I wanted to run is I have two kids and I definitely wanted to make a difference when it came to the children in my county and um, for really the minorities. There hadn't been a, um, there was a woman that was already on the commission and we're two of the youngest ones in the state of Georgia. And so just the impression with uh, women leaders, especially with county commission, and as you can tell, there's where are my ladies at. There's not that many ladies. Woo! Yeah. So, so that was a huge thing for me. Right. Um, as for me, Bob Melvin, Macon County, uh, it was a combination of myself growing up in the Macon County area, moving back, and, and wanting to make a change in my community. But a gentleman told me once before, uh, probably about 10 years prior, he was saying, Bob, if you're not in politics in the next five years, it's your own fault because you have what it takes. And that kind of stuck in the back of my mind. And I was laying the foundation to run for commissioner and not even know it. By volunteering with my community with Habitat for Humanity, uh, we were able to build about five, six houses in our local community. I took the leadership making county class not knowing that my job was sponsoring me 10 years down the road to be in a position to run. And so people kept saying, Bob, you know, you ought to try it. You know, the gentleman in our district, he's been there 16 years and, you know, we, we need to, a change. And I got my wife and my family and we knocked on doors and started us a grassroots campaign. And we went from there because I love Macon County where I live at. I remember how it was uh, back in the 70s, 80s. And it has lost some of that. And our gin that we have, a diamond that we have down there, needs to be repolished and shine and bring some new ideas. Um, well, I'm Liz Hausman from Fulton County, and quite frankly, I've been trying to figure that out for the last two years. <laughs> um, we had a musical chair situation in North Fulton, an open seat, and um, my uh, county commissioner moved up to the legislature, and a lot of my friends encouraged me to uh, pursue this seat and um, so I foolishly enough <coughs> took their advice. No, seriously, um, North Fulton County is a unique place. It's all cities now. Um, none of it is unincorporated. So the county in some respects is thought of as not being necessary anymore. And honestly, as a member of a, one of the new cities in North Fulton, I fell into that uh, category before I took office. Um, and so I feel like my job now is to support the services that the county needs in North Fulton, 
but to educate the community on what the county does do for them and the value of being in Fulton County. Because there's a lot of folks in Fulton County, in North Fulton, that would prefer to have a different situation. So it's, it's, a, it's a touchy situation sometimes, but it's very gratifying, and uh, I'm glad I did it. Uh, Carter Enfinger, Bryan County. Um, I didn't know much about politics. I still don't. Don't like politics, but you know, I, I always wondered, you know, how does the government really work? How does a local government really work? And I said, you know, I, I told my wife, I said, you know, I think I want to do it one time just to really give back to my community and learn really how it works to be involved in that process. So, um, I, again, I went out and knocked on doors and won and sometimes wonder why I did it. <laughs> but it, it is tough, but I, I ran for that reason. You know, I don't, want any, I don't want anything in return, but I want to make sure our county grows the way it should grow, you know, with development, industry, and, and, and look at our community, because we are, I think our community is going to explode soon. And you just want to kind of have the right path, go down the right path with it and have the right plan to make sure we have some good development there and things that people move up when they move in. I think people that move in our community demand more than what they're getting. And so that's one of the reasons I did it, just to, to you know, kind of unbiased, hey, what do we need in our community and let's try to get it. So that's one of the reasons I ran. Get an opportunity, I'd be glad to take, care, take advantage of it. I, I ran because I had a lot of experience from working in the government, and I wanted to use that experience to help advance um, some of the issues that I knew that we were coming up against, uh, water and sewer being a big issue in Gwinnett County. Uh, I wanted to be able to use that to say, here's some experience. You know, I, I wanted to take that and use it to the advantage of the community. I got two kids growing up, and I want them to have the same uh, opportunities that I had. The only way to do it is to be involved in it. Okay. Let's give these guys a hand, but I'm going to ask you one. Huh? Who has won and won and then lost and ran again? Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Ray Barber from Polk County. Uh, yeah, I served eight years on the board, and uh, I got off the board, and I stayed off for four years, but uh, it was in my heart. Uh, I seen a lot of things in my county that was not going, I felt like, in the right direction. The guys that was on there was making some decisions that I felt like that would going to hinder my county, and I didn't want that to happen. And my county means a lot to me. I grew up there. I lived there. I was educated there. I grew my kids up there. And it means a lot to me. And that's the reason I re ran. Uh, By the way, where's Charlie English at? Stand up, Charlie. This is the nicest man in state government at GEMA. Y'all give him a hand. He's my buddy. I don't care if he stole one of my best guys in Terry Ball. I still love him. And he, he let me tell you something. When, when it, stuff hits the fan and it's tough, it's so great to know. And I, do, and I will tell you this. I know Governor Deal has ultimate confidence and Charlie to handle some really, really tough situations. Now, I know we're rocking along right now, but we've had some tough situations. Now. And as Ge Georgia, tell them what you do, Charlie, emergency management. Tell them what you do. If y'all don't know, tell them, tell them. Come up here, Charlie. Come up here, Charlie. Come on up here, Charlie. Come on up here. Oh, you got a mic. Okay, tell them, Charlie. Let's see, county commissioners. We support county commissioners. <laughs> uh, uh, we're, 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 uh, we do the disaster and homeland security planning in response for uh, the state. 
And uh, we do, in fact, uh, supplement your assets that you have locally to respond to disasters or, uh, or potentially uh, terroristic events. But I think one of the main things we do is uh, we administer the grant program that allows you to create that capability in your community because we know the first responder is in the local community. So in Georgia, we built that from the ground up and have got some really great capabilities over the past 10 years. So thank you, Mike. Appreciate you, Charlie. All right, now let's uh, <clears throat> give you Charlie another hand for, for that, okay? <laughs> All right, let's, and let's, we'll start in the middle here. What was the biggest surprise? I mean, you had certain expectations, right, when you came in to the job. How many of y'all got certain expectations, right? How many of y'all realize you're probably going to have some surprises somewhere <laughs> along the way? So, so maybe tell us what kind of you expected, and then what was the biggest surprise as you went along? Okay. Um, for me, uh, my biggest surprise was uh, the teamwork concept. You know, it's okay to disagree and still be friends at the end of the day. And what I tried to bring with my people skills and all the training that I had, I've read in the newspaper about several meetings and how the board members are bickering back and forth. And so my thing is, you must have good communication skills. If your board is not together, then the citizens will see you not being together on one accord. And I always just try to base decisions on facts. If the facts are there, they cannot be disputed. You know, whatever the vote is, up or down, is not for a political favor in your particular district, but it's for the betterment of the whole entire community. And if you keep that in mind, I, I figure you will go a very long way, but you cannot be uh, divided. You cannot be a board divided. You have to kind of work within your boundaries, but also understand uh, your job description. That's policies and procedures. And once you do that, the the, the roadmap is there for you. So, I think, I think you reiterated this point because we we do policy and procedure. We we don't hire people. We don't fire people. Department heads do that. I think a lot of times people get want to get too involved and day-to-day -day operations where really you have to see, you know, you're doing policy and procedure overseeing that where you have your administrator or manager doing that and you oversee them. So, you know, to get involved in the day-to-day -day operations, you could work yourself to death. And I think, too, what he said about being together, you know, one commissioner is only as good as the board. Exactly. So I, I think we do agree to disagree, and we do disagree, but we don't have a lot of uh, infighting are, are, you know, so everybody sees it because you're right. They, they see that as weakness in, in the board and the board can't make a decision and there's a lot of arguing going on. So, and you know, really people, and I didn't realize this, but people, when you, you're elected and whatever you did to be elected, you, you're here, but you know, people look to you for guidance. They look to you for leadership. So, I mean, they call you on, on anything. I mean, I had a lady call me and said, hey, you know, somebody's trying to buy my little water system that my husband left me for eight houses, and I, I don't know who to turn to. I don't, I, why are they doing that? I said, well, I, she is in, somebody told me if I called you, you, you would help me out. It has nothing to do with what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, but she knew that she needed some guidance and some leadership on it. So I, I think if you rem always remember that is, you know, th they look for you for leadership and guidance. And the other big sticking thing for me is if somebody calls you, call them back. I always tell people, if you can't call somebody back, and, and all our employees, within 24 hours, either you're not doing your job or you're so overwhelmed with your job that you need help. It only takes a second to call somebody back, and most of the time, they just want somebody to call them back. Yeah, hey, I tell them no all the time. They go, hey, you know what? I just appreciate you telling me no, mm -hmm. but thanks for calling me back, you know, because nobody seems to want to call anybody back in, in this position. It, or, you know, and that's one of the things, and even in county employees, I mean, you're not, they're not that busy where they can't pick the phone up, hey, can I help you? Because remember, you work for them, and they voted you here for your leadership and guidance. Well, I definitely concur with the, these gentlemen. Um, and for me, especially with our last commission, there was a, a ton of infighting in the public, which is the absolute worst thing that you can possibly do. I'm going to be honest and tell you that 
I have cussed several of my commissioners out via telephone. <laughs> but in public, I will hug them and say, guys, I'm so glad to see you today. I mean, but it's, it's that perception because honestly, and I've, I've told several of my commissioners about this, that you have to, you have to be aware that anything that's printed in that paper, you're, effect, you're affecting economic development in your community. Um, I have uh, an example right now that we're going through is uh, our library, our stinking library for Pete's sake. And we have a couple of the commissioners that are just putting these things about the library in there. I'm going, stop talking, stop talking. Don't, you don't have to answer the paper. And you know, if you do, it, as nice as you can because you don't know what business is looking in your community that sees the county commission um, upset over the library and calling the director a moron and then you're just and they're like we're not going to Glen County you know and it's, it's the, that little stuff that you kind of need to really be aware of and, and it's definitely like these guys have said in public you are going to have to get along, but that doesn't mean that behind the scenes you can't cuss someone out if you really wanted to. We all ever done that. I mean. <laughs> that's great, that's good stuff, right? Do you want to hear about Fulton? You're real stuff and you need to listen, so I, I know, I know. You, you want to hear about Fulton? Yeah, go Fulton. How many of y'all don't go Liz. about Fulton County? Liz? Yeah, Fulton is a little different, the reason I wanted to go last, because we tend to take a different approach. Um, we tend to maybe air it all out on camera and then go have a drink afterwards. <laughs> so, um, you know, I guess one of the biggest surprises, yeah, yeah. One of the biggest surprises to me was to find out that the Civil War was still going on. I thought that that was settled, you know, 150 years ago, but in Fulton it's, it's um, every, the first and third Wednesdays of the month, we, we reenact it. So, um, you know, but in seriousness, I have found that um, I can make uh, coalitions and friends with people that I never, ever thought that that would be possible and have been able to accomplish a few things and some significant things. So I just wanted to say to the group out here that when you assume something, you know what happens. And so when you're an elected official, you cannot afford to do that. You have to do your homework, you have to be prepared, and you have to be willing to listen as much as you're willing to talk. And you have to be willing to have a conversation, even if it's unpleasant, um, because your constituents depend on you to work through the problems. But you can't win everything. Right. And you just have to move on to the next thing. And if you've got a, th a thin skin, you shouldn't be in this business. That's right. That's right. And talk, talking about friends, you know, it's funny, you know, everybody's got just like, when you got elected, you got a bunch of brand new best friends. <laughs> and I know they came up to, hey, man, you my best buddy. Well, where were you at last month? You know, <laughs> you know so it, it's funny way, you know, the friends that you thought were your friends kind of turned their back on you because, hey, I need you to do this for me. Like, well, that's not in the best interest of our county. And then they're not your friend. And then you get new, new best friends that... You know, so always be aware of and always say, you know, take what you hear with a grain of salt because, uh, you know, a lot of people say, hey, this is the way, you know, da, 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 and go come to find out that's not the way it is at all. So you run off and go off what they say. It takes a lot of work to get to the bottom of it and find out the truth about things. Is it really true or is you're just saying that to benefit you? And most of the time I find they'll say what they want to say to benefit them and they could care less about the whole community. So I think it's important to listen. Good stuff. I got time for one person, a veteran, Charlotte Nash. <laughs> Give us some perspective on some of the surprises you might have as a new commissioner. Um, first thing is, playing off of something that was said up here, there are some members of the public who will lie. So look for, and there's some, there's some elected officials who do that too. Uh, 
look for the rest of the story before you uh, before you make make decisions before you jump to the conclusion that you know everything you just heard in a phone conversation. Um, and uh, as a former staff person who's now in an elected position, um, I have a lot more sympathy for the folks who come into office uh, who've offered themselves for uh, to serve the public. Uh, didn't make it their career, but chose to do it for public service purposes. Um, and I understand why some of the people, elected officials I worked for in the past, reacted the way they did to some of the things that I was oblivious to. And I thought I was, I had a lot of experience, but it is, it's different being on the other side of the, the table. Some of the elected officials I worked for, I have had to admit that to, and they've enjoyed that. <laughs> That's good stuff, right? Yeah. Y'all need to hear this, I tell you. And um, biggest surprise is, you know, let, let me throw this out. And, and, and to me, the decision-making processes we go through are so important. And what I'd like to, to ask our panel, by the way, y'all are doing a great job. Let's give them a hand just right now. So let's, I was a cheerleader in college. Um, <laughs> We don't celebrate enough, that's my philosophy. So what's the toughest decision that you've had to deal with in the two years that you've been in office? And share with us maybe the process you used to come to that decision. Uh, I'll go for, you know, our, our biggest decision, and it's probably gonna be in some of your counties too, is a landfill issue. Well, you know, you got the NIMBY, not in my backyard folks. You got the folks that own the land. This is the only land in the whole county that a landfill can go on. And we looked all over. I said, well, it is because you own that land, <laughs> right? So I think that was the biggest decision. And, you, you know, you have to take their side and listen to it. I remember I sat in with the folks that wanted to do a couple hours and learned the anatomy of a landfill, which I didn't know. Of course, the people that found out I sat in with a meeting, well, he's getting paid off because he went and met with them and they're doing some underhanded deal. That's the other folks over there. So, you know, you have to take those decisions and weigh each, you know, the public, the county, the, the, city, the people that want it. And, and, and it is a long process. This probably took us three, three months, four months maybe to work through that process to really see. And that was, a, that's, I learned a lot about a landfill. And I learned a lot of, you know, but it is, a, it is a process, I mean, to go through. And that, that, was, that was probably one of the, the, the biggest decisions uh, that we had to make. You had to get a lot of information. We had a, a, ton, a ton of information from both sides. And if somebody on this side saw you talking to somebody getting information, well, they're doing a deal. You know, and it was back and forth. So that, that was a really tough decision, uh, you know, a hard decision. This was a long, you know, decision. And I think, too, talking about decisions like that, when, when, when our – when we make a decision, you know, and you make a decision and you decide this is what we're going to do, don't let people sway your opinion. Stand up for what you believe in. Stand up for the decision, decision that you made because it, it's happened where, oh, so-and-so said, no, I don't, I'm not real sure about that. I said, but a week ago we were 100% all on board. Well, you know, well, defend your decision and let people know why you made that decision and just instead of just wavering from it. I think citizens don't understand or people don't understand the process that you go through when you make decisions. But there's always, you know, Monday morning quarterbacks, uh, they're going to tell you how to do things. And, but, but when you make a decision, stand up for that decision and defend your decision in, in, in public and with those folks that are naysayers. And it's hard to do sometimes. For me, it, my decision or was this past year. And, and it had more to do with how not to physically harm one of my city commissioners <laughs> while going through our loss negotiations. Because I was on the loss negotiation team for Glen County. And um, poor Murray, is Murray in here? He was uh, in our mediation uh, because of course we, we couldn't come to an agreement in public. And my profession is a real estate agent, so I'm used to negotiating on a daily basis. And it was just, it didn't make any sense to me how you kind of can't talk without having someone to help you talk. Um, but ultimately, we didn't, we ended up going to mediation, and uh, it was successful. 
And, and I was the first one to tell Murray, we're going to leave here today and there's not, we're not going to accomplish anything. You're wasting my time. I'm, you know, and, and that was a whole six month process to get to that mediation, which was time consuming to say the least. Um, long and short of it, by the end of the day, we came to an agreement and everyone was excited and happy. Goes for the city vote and they voted against it. And I was at, with one of my new uh, commissioner elects, we were at that meeting. And I, I sat down right next to him and I called it. Right even before they started, because they let um, the public have their say, and I called it. I was like, it's gonna be a 4-1 vote, watch. And it was hilarious because I was mass texting um, all the county commissioners going, <laughs> they voted against it. Um, finally though, they had a special call meeting and I like to say that I had my come to Jesus moment with two of those commissioners. That morning, they wanted to renegotiate out of one thing, and, and honestly, and this was the one thing that I, I guess I'm more proud of with the county. I almost feel like, and I'm sorry, I hope I don't offend anybody in here, but I really feel like county commissions are a lot more organized, or at least in my, my impression, are a lot more organized than the city commissions because during this meeting, well, it, in, in, in my impression, um, but during this meeting, I come to find out, I said, you know, guys, look, mediation, this is, you know, I was like, let's put it in simple terms. I'm a real estate agent. You're a buyer and a seller. We came up with a price on the house, and four days before closing, you want to renegotiate the price of the house. It's like, we went into mediation, wasted taxpayer dollar, but like I already made sure like if we were in the realm of, of being comfortable with our other commissioners that we could pass it. I was like, what the heck did y'all think you were doing? And they said, well, we thought we were going to go in there and negotiate and then be able to go back to our commissioners and make sure they're okay with it. And I said, you didn't ask your other commissioners like, where y'all were comfortable in making this decision because, you know, it was, I can't remember how much, it was like $5,000 that we spent that day. So ultimately he said, no, no, we didn't do that. But ended up passing three to two, so we do not have to go to baseball or arbitration. But that was my hardest decision, yes. For me, uh, it would be two decisions, uh, one in the, in the area of health, uh, a gentleman wanted to put up a cell phone tower uh, out in this community, out in this area. And uh, the neighborhood really pushed against it. You know, people showing up at your house, people having your cell phone number, calling you, asking you to vote against it. I've read so much on cell phone towers about the microwave <laughs> radiation that I felt like I quit my job and go start putting up cell phone towers or something. <laughs> But that was a hard decision because the people did not want the cell phone tower in their neighborhood. But the policies, the zoning, the spec, the guy met all requirements. He met all requirements. And it was hard for me to sit there and take a vote. I read so much on cell phone towers. Most of the studies are done in Europe where you have clusters of neighborhoods, you know, or villages or things of that nature. And, and, and the harmful effects of it is no more than a normal microwave or x-ray that you get. You know, all these studies have been done. Six point some billion dollar industry, how can you not accept that? And, but on the area of health and safety, the cell phone tower was going on an area where it's a dead zone at. And so if something would happen to someone in that three mile, five mile stretch, and they can't get cell phone reception, then what? <coughs> Then what? You know, so we looked at that. I voted for it. It was hard, you know, because once I got into the grocery store, the people in that neighborhood talking were them. talking to me, you know, and I couldn't, couldn't run away from them. Uh, on the personal side, it's growing up in this community, and then I saw people coming in asking for tax relief, but not really having a legitimate uh, reason for not paying their taxes. And the Board of Commissioners, you know, you can relieve the penalties and interest, and that's basically it. And some of the reasons that you were hearing did not fall in the policies or the guidelines. And, and then you take a vote 
and I have to leave this commissioner meeting and say, I know these people, but the reasons that they were asking for tax relief was not there. And then I start looking at, you know, why, you know, this was going on. And the last but not least, um, our development authority came to us and wanted to go Freeport tax exemption in our community to make us economic and business friendly. And I started digging into it and found out that the citizens voted on Freeport tax exemption back in 2000. This was 2011 and nothing had been done and we were only at 20%. And the citizens say, okay, we need jobs, we need jobs, but we were not giving the development authority the tools that they needed. And so, uh, talking with some of the commissioners, we decided that we would go to 100%, not do the 40% increments. And we got blasted by a couple of people in the community because we just took $300,000 off of the table, you know, revenues off of the table. And that was hard, but people did not understand the bottom line. Companies were not coming to our community or would not even look at our community if they did not have free port tax exemption. Everyone around us had it, and we didn't have it because we were being a little bit too conservative. So that, 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 that was really hard. That was really hard. Um, well, again, this is Fulton County. Let me preface it by uh, that. Um, how many people in the room have ever heard of a bull hook? Charlotte knows. A bull hook I was unfamiliar with when I took office. Um, until uh, I've been there about three months, I guess, and a commissioner offered up an anti-bull hook ordinance, which was geared towards um, the circus that comes to town every year. The bull hook is a training tool that's used with elephants, and apparently it's it's got a little razor blade at the end of this long billy club type stick. Well, you know, we started getting letters from all over the world from the PETA people, if you're familiar with PETA, um, including Demi Moore. I mean, I got a letter from Demi Moore. How cool is that? <laughs> Asking me to please ban the bullhook. Um, or the world would stop you know, rotating on its axis or something. Um, however, you know, in Fulton County, we already had pretty strong um, anti-abuse ordinances in place for the protection of animals. I felt like we already covered this item along with every other sort of uh, item that could be used. So I was one of the few, maybe on the only one, that voted no. The com commission uh, passed this anti-bullhook uh, ordinance, which has economic development impact to the circus. The first year after this was passed, they managed to get a restraining order against the implementation, but now we're here are a year and a half later. Circus is coming to town in January. City of Atlanta has a different animal control ordinance, but who manages all of the animal control issues in Fulton County? We do. We have IGAs with every city in Fulton County, including Atlanta. But since Atlanta will not acknowledge our bullhook ban, we have an impasse, and the circus may not come to Atlanta. And they're backing out of our animal control contract, which means that every other city in Fulton County has to pay more for the same coverage. So even though it may be a, a little, or what you think is an insignificant decision, the ramifications can be things you never even consider. And it could have a definite economic impact <laughs> tied to it, so beware of the bull hook. <laughs> Tom Crow, how would Jackson County vote on that? <laughs> He's gone. All right. Lamar Parrish, where's Lamar at? Lamar, tough decision. How do you deal with it? Share, share that with each other. I mean, I, this, this is the, hey, this is the real so life. He's the sole commissioner. <laughs> Yeah, but let me check. But let me check. This is what Jason said. I was telling him earlier. Jason, the other sole commissioner in Chattooga County, he said, he goes, and I don't know if you do it like this way. Like he said, I get a bottle of Johnny Walker Red. I sit on my front porch, and in the morning, the decision's made. <laughs> That's a sole commissioner. So he's different from everybody else. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't deny that uh, that's happened a time or two, and, that, <laughs> and I also can't deny that it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Well, well, a lot of times people think sole commissioners have it made. That, you know, we wish we were a sole commissioner. We didn't have to put up with the other commissioners. And I agree with that to a big extent. But at the same time, we've got an untold amount of pressure on us to make our decisions and, and make them stick. We don't have anybody to hide behind once we do make those decisions. And I recently had the same thing with a cell phone tower. I had the neighborhood come to me, came to the meeting, and they just I had all the reasons that cell phone, phone towers were going to ruin their life and make their kids sick. And, you know, I, I, I'd done a little bit of research and did a little bit more research too. But in the end, I had to look at what's more valuable for our community. Those people who thought that they were going to be sick from a cell phone tower that incidentally was a quarter of a mile away are the, are the fact that we had an area of the county that was not served and that, that provided a public safety issue. So, but what I did is I, after I made my decision personally, then I went to every house that had been at that meeting and talked to them individually. Did not get them to agree, but they agreed not to assassinate me and maybe, <laughs> maybe a few of them still voted for me. But the, the, the one simple thing that the guy told me is always do what's right. And in your mind and in your heart, if your decision you're making is based on what you think is the right thing to do, then you, you have answered your own decision and nobody can question you because of your integrity. And I think that's the bottom of all of our decisions. Think about what's right, not for you, not for your wife, who sometimes gets a big impact on it, but what's... <laughs> what's best for the community as a whole. And that's, that's what you have to go for. That's what you were elected to do. That's great. Let's give these folks a hand. Let me tell you. I want to <laughs> wrap it up. I want to share just three things with you really quick. Jimmy Hicks knows this guy, Jim Lofton. When you think about processes of decisions, there's three things that I learned from my high school football coach that, you know, you know things you learn looking after your hole of a helmet you don't learn anywhere else, right? Some of y'all played football know what that meant. The rest of y'all saying, what in the world is he talking about? <laughs> but I had a coach one time, he said, Mike, there's three things about being a leader. We're all leaders here. Number one, always do what's right. You with me? People watch every move we make. When Liz was going 90 miles an hour through Jackson County, she didn't know I was watching her. <laughs> now, was that right for Liz to speed like that? No, she wasn't. I'm, Liz, you know I love you. You know you weren't. And, uh, I'm going home a different way. Uh, <laughs> number two, listen to me. Number one, always do what's right. Number two, have compassion for people. People are hurting. Charlotte, you know, you and I spent some time with a little couple. We couldn't help them, but we had compassion, didn't we? And we spent that time, I'm going to tell you something, sometimes people just need to know that you're available and that you care. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And in your counties, you think about the people in your counties, you, there's a lot of folks that need to know you care as a leader. Number three, and this is one that I love about ACCG and these folks right here, and, and these first two also, work harder than anyone else in your profession, commit to excellence. And when you know you got it lined up, it's always too soon to quit. And if you'll stick with that and follow that process, I thought one of the things that really stuck out with me, and all of y'all really said it, was make sure you've got processes that work, you stick with it, and then you have that personal integrity that allows you to follow through with it then you will be successful. So God bless you. Looking forward to working with you. Thank you. I, no, De uh, can I say one? Deborah, where's Deborah at? Where'd she go? I'm sorry. She, she wanted me to admit, thank you, Ross, for having us. But with ACCG, I know y'all are all new. And we were new last year. And we didn't really know what ACCG was, who was paying for it or anything. But there, there are some policy committees. I, I don't know if y'all got a chance, the opportunity to sign up for them yet. But, but go out there and look, and if you want to be involved on, on it, you know, with the ACC on a state level, sign up for a policy committee. I signed up for uh, public safety and courts and health and human services. And it's just an opportunity to get input from you, for, for people from your community to work on legislative issues and that for, with ACCG to put this pushed up to a state level. So it, it has been exciting, and uh, it is just a little extra work, uh, but, but it is really rewarding when you can uh, – 
know that you made you helped make a decision at a state level through with ACCG. So I just wanted to say that real quick. I got one also. Also use the ACCG mentoring program. That has really helped me. They paired me up with a commissioner from Marion County, and we talk on a monthly basis, and we try to bounce ideas off of each other. But he really made my first year uh, worth all the marbles in the world, just calling him and saying, he, or he calling me, Bob, how are you doing? Uh, what can I help you with? What advice do you need? And it became personal. And I'm glad, don't, do not find a mentor within your commission board. Step out, give a new set of eyes. And that really helped me. So I thank ACCG for that, for the mentoring program. It has really helped me. Thank you. Great. Thank you. How many of you?